Hey guys, welcome back. And this is the time where we're gonna talk about capabilities of Nikon Z6 II. Coming up next. So guys, I am going to be strictly speaking from a perspective of a photographer, of a stills photographer. I am mainly shooting portraits, I am shooting weddings, engagements, uh, family portraits. Now on the market there are so many other cameras right now and you know people are trying to decide, you know, what do they go with? Do they go with uh, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Nikon? And I know a lot of people like Nikon cameras. So I figured, you know what? Um, let me do a video on Nikon video capabilities only. Now, I am not shooting uh, films. I am not shooting commercials, things like that. But mainly, you know, talking heads like that. So I think you will appreciate this one. So if you're really looking for um, more of a details and specifications and you are into, you know, knowing how many frames per second and everything else, Gerald and Don, I will give you I will link him in the description below. He've done an, uh, a great video just really covering all the spec capabilities of Nikon uh, Z6 and uh, maybe Z7 as well. Um, and so as you know, um, the many more photographers are getting into uh, video um, arena as well. Now, maybe because they're trying to expand uh, their uh, paying capabilities, they're trying to expand more into being a YouTubers um, or uh, Instagram and you know things like that. But I want to, so I want to kind of you know jump into this uh, bandwagon right now and talk a little bit about video capabilities. So um, let's start with the flip up screen. So as you know Nikon Z6 II, Z7 II, they have a flip up screen rather than a uh, fully articulated screen like a uh, Canon R5 or Sony 7S III. And um, so uh, this one in front of me here is Nikon um, D500 um, and has a very similar idea basically. It flips up and then in the flips uh, down as well. Now, now with Nikon Z6 II, it actually flips up uh, just a little bit less than this one, which I'm not sure why because this is a more of a previous model and I really appreciate it when uh, you have really kind of goes up a little bit more depending how low you're shooting. So, but it's sufficient enough. Um, now there's a big debate about, you know, whether you need to have a fully articulated screen or whether you should have a flip up screen and depending, you know, what perspective you're coming from. If you were just right behind the camera and you, you're kind of mainly shooting like this for the most part, I'm hearing a lot of people say it's more comfortable rather than having your screen to be off to the side. Now, you know, something I was thinking about, you know, I follow, as most of you probably know, uh, Peter McKinnon, a uh, great photographer, filmmaker, but he started with shooting, from what I remember, um, doing a lot of vlogs with Canon 1DX. And that one, I believe, doesn't have any um, uh, screen capabilities when it comes to rotating on the flip up. It's literally just a flat screen in the back of a camera. And, you know, he was vlogging like that. Um, obviously, we know that Canon has a, a great uh, dual pixel autofocus, so there's no doubt that you're going to be in focus. But that's where Nikon, I think, is right now. They have a fantastic autofocus specifically in this area. And if you were to want to, want to vlog, as long as you have a wide enough lens, and you know that you are in the frame, I don't think you have any problems with vlogging. Um, so let's move on. Ergonomics. Uh, now this one I wish um, Nikon worked a little bit more. I know they're going this idea of having a smaller body, but you know, there's something about having a really a robust body where you can hold it very well. Um, I think Nikon D500, D850, they have a perfect, for me, um, ergonomics. Because, you know, your pinky here is not kind of going under your camera. With Z6 II, Z7, Z6, you kind of, you know, if you have a little bit larger hands like mine, 
you will notice it's actually going in a little bit underneath and many people are now getting different additional L brackets that you can put in or you can get uh, a battery grip that kind of gives you a little bit more of a uh, better handling I would say um, it's not terrible, you know, when it comes to Z62 ergonomics, but I wish you would have had this a little bit more of a, you know, more, you kind of, you holding the camera with your full hand and, you know, it's very secure. So, um, what else we have? We got uh, two card slots, SD cards and, um, and CF Express, as well as XQD card. You have mini HDMI, um, as well as USB-C port. Um, for hot charging the camera, a power bank, uh, which is nice. If you're recording a longer videos, you should be able to attach um, a power bank and record a little bit longer. As far as the record limit, camera still has 30 minutes, you know, 29 uh, minutes and 59 seconds record limit. I'm not sure why they still doing that. I know a lot of people are complaining about it and there's uh, you know, unless you're recording some sort of a, a longer uh, takes and maybe it's an interview where you want to make sure that uh, you have enough uh, time uh, left on the camera. But, you know, 30 minutes, I think they can do probably better a little bit more. I'm hoping with new cameras that Nikon will come out, as well as other manufacturers, they will really get rid of this uh, 30 minute limit. You know, maybe they're still concerned with overheating if you're playing you know, uh, 4K 60 or something like that, or some cameras have 4K 120. Uh, maybe they're still concerned about overheating, perhaps. Um, now, Nikon Z62, Z72 has a new battery, uh, which has more power, maybe about 15% more. It's the same size as many previous Nikon uh, cameras as well. It's uh, This one has an EN EL15C, uh, which if you're recording a talking head, straight, you know, you should be able to get about one hour and 15 minutes, which I think is relatively uh, reasonable. But if you attach a power bank to it, or if you swap uh, uh, batteries, you should be okay. Now, as far as the video specs, um, it's a 4K 60 with recent firmware update. It's still 8-bit. Um, you can record with a flat profile since it cannot shoot with analog internally. Now, this one I'm shooting uh, with, obviously it's 8-bit, and I wanna show what the colors look like. Now, I actually have my gray card with, um, I'm shooting 4K, 24 uh, frames per second, neutral profile, and custom white balance. Now, I got two lights in front of me, one to my left, which is to your right, uh, and set to uh, 5600 Kelvin for daylight, as well as to my right uh, or to your left, I have another 5600 Kelvin um, um, light, uh, daylight. However, I am shooting with a custom white balance, uh, just to wanna make sure that, um, and I'm using my gray card to indicate that. Now you got 1080p uh, with 120 frames per second plus internal 120 frames per second slow motion, uh, which you don't need to process. Uh, video autofocus. Uh, now let's talk about this one. Uh, I know that a lot of people are concerned about uh, what's the video autofocus for this camera is like. So um, what I've done is I recorded a small film of myself uh, working out and do a little bit of weightlifting and by no means I am a heavy weight um, weightlifter, but I want to be able to demonstrate and uh, not only to people, but honestly for myself, you know, what am I capable of when it comes to recording myself and how would the camera actually perform in those situations. So let me play this clip right now. It's called Lift and I hope um, you'll get to appreciate a little bit more what Nikon Z62 is capable of. Everything was recorded in um, autofocus uh, with a 50 millimeter lens, uh, S lens, which is actually fantastic. You know, if you haven't seen my video before, I will link it up here in the description to, to my left, I guess, uh, and as well as in the description below. And hopefully you get to appreciate what camera is capable of. Now let's play it. Growing up, I was a skinny kid who experienced back injuries during my teen years. But as for many of us, life goes on, we get healed, we find our own path. But one thing that we have in common, we all have this fragile body, God-given vessel. And if we don't take care of it, it will sink sooner than later. I get it. 
I wasn't born to be a professional weightlifter. I'm not even close to being in that league. But what I realized is that my mind will dictate what my body does. Heck, I don't lift 800 pounds and perhaps I never will. But that's not the reason to limit myself. I try to push harder when I lift. Most of the time, it hurts. It's uncomfortable. Guess what? Ships were not built to remain in the harbor. They were built to withstand storms and big waves. That's why I go outside of my comfort zone to experience life. Whether by doing daily push-ups, running, or weightlifting. While it hurts, it's good for our bodies, but it's also good for our mind. Don't stay in your harbor. Get on your journey. Left. So now you saw the video of Nikon Z6 II with a 50 millimeter lens, a 1.8, and what the video looks like. Again, and most of that video was recorded in 120 frames per second, slow motion internally. And then just, it was just easier for me to do it that way. So um, take it for what it is. Do you like autofocus capability? Do you like the colors? Um, so, but I just simply want to demonstrate what it's like. Now, if you want to plug in Automos Ninja 5, it app opens a lot more capabilities. Again, if you're into those things, I'm personally not because I'm not shooting commercials. You know, you can shoot ProRes RAW and a Blackmagic RAW now. You can have an N-Log and 10-bit with Automos Recorder, uh, which again, uh, those of you who are into that stuff, you probably would appreciate it. Um, IBIS in camera is great. El electronic or vibration reduction VR is great and removes those little micro jitters that if you are hand holding the camera uh, for video, uh, again, I personally recorded, you know, my kids playing outside in the back, uh, in the backyard. I didn't have any problems uh, when I, uh, go and want to play back the, the video uh, with uh, VR, it's it's a great video as well. Um, Auto white balance does a great job as well. Uh, you have a three capabilities of, of um, auto white balance. You can make it neutral or a little bit warmer, a little bit uh, cooler. So um, if you don't want to use a flat profile, because I know sometimes that one can be challenging to see, you can actually use a neutral um, profile. Actually, I'm using neutral profile now and I'm slightly um, color grading and by no means I call myself uh, a professional when I know how to color grade, but what you see on the screen is that it's a color graded video. So who is this camera for? I think this camera is for someone who is a photographer, but who is looking to get into video and uh, from kind of using it as a hybrid camera. And I'm saying this um, with uh, absolute confidence that if you use this camera, like I'm using myself right now for talking headshot, most people are probably gonna be concerned, not so much about the colors because you can do a lot in post-processing still, but the autofocus IF, right? I mean, if you are talking, you wanna make sure that you are gonna be always in focus, you, you be the judge right now because it is absolutely fantastic. And I'm looking at myself on the screen right now and I can see that I am fully in focus as well. So I hope you guys are able to appreciate, you know, it's much cheaper than uh, Canon R5 or Sony uh, A7S III when it comes to video capabilities. Uh, probably if you're a video creator, you're likely looking into uh, those cameras uh, for yourself. But if you are, you know, coming from another camera manufacturer and you're looking to switch to uh, Nikon because you love the colors and I'm hearing a lot of people love the colors for a uh, Nikon as well as Fuji I think you're gonna be feel I think you're gonna be feeling pretty happy with it um, I am uh, I have been considering of maybe switching to another camera either Canon or Sony because it has a better autofocus when it comes to video but I can't complain right now 
it's like there's nothing for me to say well it's not focusing on my face or you know if I am uh, moving somewhere it's just gonna uh, not find me again it's uh, it's perfect for me right now I, I don't think I need anything more and since I'm using the external monitor right now and I can frame myself and I can perfectly see that um, you know where everything's located uh, where my corners angles are I don't think I need anything extra than that um, so I think there's a, a couple things that I wish would have been a little bit different um, you know one of them is and maybe this could be changed with the firmware um, update um, I would love to see that if cam if Nikon could add a tele light okay uh, that tells you basically that you're recording yourself for video or you know maybe some kind of a beep where you can turn it off and we can turn it on back on because I hope I record I'm recording myself right now. Um, obviously, if you're watching this video, I am, but I don't remember if I actually hit the record button at this point. Uh, maybe it's kind of automatically. So I, I wish I would, there would be some sort of a, a, an instant feedback that it gives you, that tells you that you are recording yourself right now. And one other one is, um, and I guess, I mean, you can probably uh, provide additional extension for yourself is um, I wish that ergonomics was uh, just a little bit different you know be able to add um, extra um, height to the camera I'm not sure if they will be able to do this with you know if they're gonna come out with uh, Z8 um, I know that Z9 is gonna be more of a professional grade camera that they can they're gonna be coming out hopefully uh, in 2021 this year uh, where you're going to have, obviously, you know, uh, vertical grip as well as, you know, normal uh, grip when you're holding horizontally. I'm sure that one is going to be great ergonomically. But I wish Nikon Z6 II, Z7 II had that capability as well. Um, obviously, you're gonna pay, you can pay, uh, you can purchase uh, additional external uh, battery grip to it that will provide you that capability, but it's extra cost. Um, and also it's extra weight. So I kind of see where Nikon is going with this one because many creators, photographers, they want to have a lighter cameras, smaller cameras. So they're really targeting that market and pushing their boundaries. So guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions when it comes to video uh, specs and how to use the camera, please put it down in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. I don't have that many subscribers here on this channel yet, uh, so I have no problem answering any questions that may come up. And otherwise, I will see you in another video.